Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. It's a joy to be at Jesus House, Dallas, where there are crazy, crazy anointed singers. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I, I, even if you don't want to dance, yeah. amen. If you come here, you listen to one voice, you will dance. Yeah. Amen. You know, when they were singing, I, I'm not familiar with the song until they start projecting it on the screen. Then I started to move my body. I started to move my leg. Hallelujah. Give it up. Give it up for the wonderful choir. You guys are wonderful. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And every member of Jesus out Dallas, you are wonderful. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for PF and his lovely wife, Pastor AK. Amen. He is my friend. Amen. The family is my friend. And we talk about the allowance of the children later. But you guys are my friend. Give the Lord a clap offering. You know, Leah, Coca once said, in your lifetime, if God has given you three friends, you've made it in life. People whose yes is yes, who know is no, people have your back. That when you are not around, they will say what they ought to say. When you are there, when, they will say what, they will say when you are there, when you are not there, they say the same thing. So I want to thank you, PF, you are my friend. Amen. And it's my golf body too. Amen. So we will we, we have time to fellowship. Amen. At a different level. You may be seated. God bless you in Jesus' name. And I want to thank God for the CFO, Pastor Peter, and his lovely wife. It is well in Jesus' name. Yeah, and it's, as a CFO, I've been convincing him to give his credit card to my girls. He won't listen to me. You know, one of these days he will listen eventually. Praise the Lord. Shall we bow heads in prayer? Obadiah 117 says, upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. And the people of God shall possess their possessions. Unto you, O God, we are gathered. For it is written, unto you shall the garden of your people be. We are open. Our hearts are open. Our minds are open. Thou lily of the valley, thou bright and the morning star, the one that is, the one that was, the one that will forever be. Feel us today. Touch us today. Heal us today. Bring us closer to yourself today. Our hearts that are aching, our hearts that are troubled, Jesus, 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 intervene. Take all the glory and let there be testimonies. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before I go on with the message, I want to ask my wife to say hello to the church for one minute. Amen. They had a wonderful, wonderful program just this past weekend. Amen. And we want to thank God for Pastor A.K. and uh, my wife. They did a wonderful job. And we are the golf course praying for them. Amen. Amen. We are doing our own part and we are interceding. So say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> no, this is really just to say thank you to One Voice, um, the instrumentalist. Ife, thank you so much for getting everybody together, rehearsals. And I know that was a challenge, especially in the room that we were given. But I thank you for all that you did. Really, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you for coming, and thank you for sharing your voices with us. We really appreciate you. If you don't already know, I know you already know, you have two special women in the house. That's Pastor Gloria and Pastor AK. Amen. They have been 100% supportive of me in the Pastor's Wives Forum and in the ministry. So I want you just on behalf of, you know, for me and for my husband and PWF, please, please take good care of them. I know you are, but they are so special. Thank you so much, Pastor Gloria. Thank you so much, Pastor AK. We appreciate you. And, of course, I cannot forget PF. <laughs> and Pastor Quiton for releasing the funds. <laughs> we appreciate that, too. But thank you. Bottom of my heart, I really just want to say thanks for everything and all the support you've given to me and the Pastor's Wives Forum. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. This morning, as I was seeking the face of the Lord, because I know I'm going to be here a couple of months ago, there's a lot of messages I could have preached in my heart of heart. I would have loved to talk about favor. You know, the hour of favor, the season of favor. 
the aroma of favor. Amen. Surrounding you, surrounding Jesus as of where God has taken you from to where he is now. But God knows his people. Give me and change the world. He said, go and talk to my people about loneliness. And here comes the title, help. I am lonely. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, that's in the Old Testament. If you can't find Genesis, you can turn to your neighbor and say, what page number is it in your Bible? <laughs> and still, if you can't do that, just look at the screen. It says, and the Lord said, it is not. Can we read it together? Can we read it together? May the Lord bless the reading of the word in Jesus' name. God made us in his image. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, And God said, let us, talking to the Trinity, let us make man in our image. And the Bible says, in the image of God made he male and female. That means we are relational beings. We cannot live a life as a soloist. It's not possible. Because God make us like him, God wants us to relate with people. We need people. We need God. We need each other. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you need me for real. <laughs> and I think I need you. Praise the Lord. In a literal sense, when God created us, he put us in a place called paradise, where we have fellowship with God. The Bible says in the cool of the day, God will come down, and they will have fellowship. I don't know whether they are drinking Kool-Aid or what they are drinking. Together with God and man, they will go around fellowship with one another. They enjoy God to the fullness. They interact with him. There was no issue whatsoever until sin came in. And when God created man in that Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, he says your assignment is not really to work, but I want to introduce work into your life. So what I want you to do is to dress the garden. Amen. And you know there's a difference between dressing and tilling the ground. And by the time man sinned, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, he says because you have sinned, the fellowship has been cut off. And because you have been cut off, no longer are you going to Water the garden, not longer are you going to take care of the garden or dress the garden. You will start to till the ground. There's a difference. Dressing the garden, I don't know whether you love flowers. All you do is go there when you are relaxed, take some scissors, trim your flowers. That's what God intends for us to be. Naturally, there was rain. Everything was green. But now that man's saying, he said, because of you, I cost the ground. You are going to till the ground before you can come out. Then, before this, the scripture can say, and it is not good for man to be alone. Alone means negation. Alone means bad. Alone means annihilation. Alone means it is not good. And do you know what God said? I will make a help meet for man. Please understand, the help meet is not a retainer. The help meet is not an employee. The help meet is not a domesticated servant. The help meet, you remember when God made him, I know men are going to be peace, but understand theology. Amen. <laughs> You know, when God wants to make the man, they say he took out of his rib the side. He didn't take it from the head so that the woman will not rule over. He didn't take the bone from the feet because the feet is very strong so that he will not step over her. He said, I will make a help meet for the man out of his side. He took a rib out. And sir, man, until you find your help meet, that vacuum is there. No work will fill it. No man will fill it. Amen? No salary will fill it. No car will fill it until you find your help meet. This helper is your completer. This helper is your sucker, a reliever. This help meet is the one that saves the other from extinct. This helper is the one that accord a relief to someone who is in danger. This help me is somebody who is dying of thirst that gave him water. That is the help me. And please, ma, because we are in an age now where many people are divorced, where there's a lot of singles in the house. Sir, ma, as far as God is concerned, when he created woman, the woman was with God before he took her to the man. 
So your purpose in life as a woman is not to find a man. Please understand the word. Before God brought you to the man, you were originally with God. So your purpose is to make sure that you make God happy. Your purpose in life is not just for companionship, but to collaborate with God to fulfill destiny. Sir, ma, don't ever say you need a man to be complete. You are already complete in God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is man that needed help. Because you are already complete with God. God said, hey, look up there. There is that man who is going to die. Please go and help him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, sir, ma, because you are not married, listen, because you are divorced, because you are single, you don't need an Adam in your life to complete you. Amen. All you need is God. He says, I will make a... Do you know Adam never knew he needed a woman? It was God that looked at this man. This man is going to die in this garden. Because for every Mr. Tortoise... Listen, listen. For every Mr. Tortoise, there is Mr. Tortoise. For every Mr. Gorilla, there's Mrs. Gorilla. For every Mr. Lion, there's Mrs. Lion. But for the man, there was not a help meet for him. So when God created the woman, he already complete in God. God says, go and help him. You are an helper to give him companionship. Amen. And when he stepped in there, the man said, oh, 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 man. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I know that's what Pierre said every time he wakes up in the morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So understand this verse. It says, and the Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help me. Alone, as I've said, is separation from actual living. Alone means to be separated. Alone means alienation. Incomplete, bad. And sir, ma, when God says something is bad, it's bad. And understand, it says, I will make man, not a boy. Sir, ma, a boy is still at home, and there are many boys getting married. And that is why we have problem in the homes. Amen. Marriage is for men, not for boys. Praise the Lord. So, sir, ma, as long as, amen, amen, as long as you are still under your parent aprons, they are the one giving you instruction, you are still a boy. Amen. You are not fit to be married until you are ready to make an independent decision and make a decision and stand by that decision, whether good or bad, and have a job, then you are a man. Praise the Lord. Then you need a helper. Otherwise, please stay at home. Don't look for a woman because you are still a boy. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So he promised to do something about it. He made a helper for the man. Let's move on because I have a flight to catch. Amen. <laughs> So the question is quickly, on this outline, we want to quickly look at what is loneliness. What are the symptoms of loneliness? Can people be coming to a Jesus house, Dallas, where we have life, where people have the spirit, and still be lonely? What is loneliness? What are the sources of loneliness? What are the dangers of loneliness? And how can I get help? You will get help in Jesus' name. I say you get help in Jesus' name. So when we are talking about loneliness, the story goes that when God created the first man, it unfolds the damage of alienation when God drove him out of the garden. And when God drove him out of the garden, there was a problem. Adam looked around and says, yes, God, I never asked for a wife. It's the woman you gave me. And God, eh. Do you know since then, if you don't pray your heart out, God doesn't give you a wife. Because you are going to blame, ah, it's Gloria. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the woman you gave me. You, you know, I was doing my own business. There was no problem. And do you know he was blaming God? It was the woman you gave me. And God turned to Eve. What happened? He said, no, I was minding my own business. It was Satan. It was the serpent. Everybody was, instead of them to take account. Instead of them to take responsibility for their action, they refused. Now, what did God do? 
He replaced the fellowship. He drove them out of the garden. Now, quickly, as we move on in loneliness, what is loneliness? Loneliness is a complex, usually unpleasant emotional response to isolation or lack of companionship. It's isolation. It includes anxious feelings about a lack of connectiveness. You come to church, you don't want to talk to anybody, you are just by yourself, you're an island, you are lonely. Amen. Even though it's a community, loneliness can be felt even when you have five children. Even though you come from a country that people knock on the door without calling you, and you can still be lonely. Let us look at symptoms of loneliness. Maybe you have it, maybe you don't, but let's look at it. Amen? Symptoms of loneliness. I don't know whether you can read it. He said a study was conducted at the University of Chicago on loneliness. It says over 20% of the world, 6 billion people, are lonely. So one out of five persons that you meet every day is what? It's lonely. And the symptoms include, but not limited to this, number one, high degree of materialism. When people are lonely, they incur excessive debt. They have 20 issues, but that's not enough. They max out their credit card. Whether three or four, they just keep buying and keep buying, and they are trying to fill that void. But nothing can fill it. So high degree, turn to your neighbor and say, I hope they're not talking about you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two symptoms for loneliness is that they are intimidated by what? Quietness. When they go to an apartment and they are lonely, noise must come. If there is no noise, they can open the microwave and just keep banging it, music, every, boo, 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 boo. It's a sign of loneliness. They can't be quiet. Amen. Not only can they not be quiet, the radio is on, the earpiece is on, the stereo is on. Amen. It spells, the Bible says, there is no peace, says the Lord for the wicked. Number three, consistent activity. They go to work in the morning, spend eight, ten hours at work, come back, they are still in front of their computer, even though they have five children, even though they have a wife that loves them. It's a sign they are lonely. Hallelujah. There are seven of them. Number three, that's number three. Number four, preoccupation with self. Amen. It's, everything is always about them. They don't care about church. They don't care about community. It's I, me, myself only. Get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. Amen. It's all about me. And all their prayers is God bless me, my wife. Maybe when you bless me, my wife will be blessed. Don't worry about my wife, just me. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's preoccupation with self. Then these people, they have high attachment to familiarity. They take one course to church every day. And if that road is blocked because of traffic, they ain't coming to church. Hallelujah. Amen. They eat one kind of food. I'm not talking of PF. Amen. <laughs> I'm making fun of my friends this morning, but it's okay. Hallelujah. Excessive TV watching. When you are lonely, they are always munching on something. Amen. They will turn from Oprah to CNN, from CNN to ESPN, from CNN, from ESPN to what channels you watch? Bravo to what? Uh, you, you, uh, you know the channels you watch. Maybe you are one of them that we are talking about. <laughs> Amen. And they fall into the satanic trap of TV watching. We can lead to what? Obesity. Incessant munching. They will eat cookies. They will eat crackers. They will order for fries from fries. They will go for everything. Thank you very You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And people are lonely. Bible study is viewed as non-essential. They come to church one Sunday and they will look as if everybody owes them something. You don't preach their message. The pastor is not around or Pastor AK is not around. It's, there's nobody else in the church. Hey, these people need a break sometimes. Amen? And I think they need to go to Hawaii one of these days, both of them. <laughs> But they have to buy four tickets, too. So it's not just for two. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> May the Lord. So those are the symptoms of loneliness. But let's move on. Let's move on. When we are talking about loneliness, amen, quickly, what are the sources of loneliness? Number one, disconnection from God. 
Number two, disconnection from the help meet. Number three, disconnection from fellowship. Let's take them one by one as we move on. When we are talking about disconnection from God, a man called Adam was disconnected from God. The moment Adam ate the forbidden fruit, what happened? He was naked. And when he was naked, God called him in the middle of the garden. Adam, where are you? He says, I was afraid. Not only was I afraid, I hid my voice. I hid myself when I heard your voice. Seasons of feeling disconnected from God is described as wilderness experience. During this time, you pray, there is no answer. During this time, it seems God is answering everybody's prayers, but it's not yours. There is a fog around your life, wilderness. Because of what? There is a disconnection from God. When you pray, even when you are praying, you need them, you fall asleep. Because there is no connection with God. Because of that, this example of people are disconnected from God. Number one is David. In Psalm 13, verse 1, to he says, Oh God, will you forget me forever? Amen. There's another person who was disconnected, King Saul. He was a man after God's own heart. He was taller than everybody else. But because he got disconnected from God, guess what? He went to go and speak to the witch of Endor. Just to be able to hear something from God. My prayer for you is that you will not be disconnected from God in Jesus' name. If there has been a disconnection, if there has been an open circuit, you know, talking electrically now, there is no current flowing between you and God. Please don't leave church this morning. Meet the ministers. Hold your hands. Pray together. And please get your life back on track. Amen? And not that alone, there is a man called Samson. Samson was a man that ruled Israel for 20 years. He was a man soaked in the anointing. He was a man they can take the job on of an ass and kill 1,000 people because God was with him. But immediately was disconnected from God. You know what they did to him? They made him to grind corn for the enemies. They took out his eyes. Do you know that when we are talking about taking, taking off eyes, there is no anesthesia in those days. They put a hot knife into fire and they put it into his eyes, pop it out. That's what happened when you get disconnected from God. My prayer is that you will never be disconnected from God in Jesus. Every person that is con disconnected from God is number one, maybe due to disobedience. Why did Adam got disconnected? He disobeyed God. Saul, why did he get disconnected? He disobeyed God. Go and kill all the Amalekites. He says, I know better. I will keep the best, the sheep and the rams. And they say, God is more interested in obedience. God is more interested in obedience than sacrifice. Amen. Samson, God disconnected because he was a man that loved pornography. Amen. R-rated movies. The harder they call, the better it is for him. And the, and the anointing is still flowing. Amen. And the first thing Samson ushered in his mouth, the man that was, his birth was announced by angels, is I see a woman. Ah. With all the anointing in your life, all you see is a woman. I hope when you come to Jesus' house, it's all you see is not just women, no. Praise the Lord. <laughs> As you, can we read that? We we'll want to have that in yellow. You will enter. Automatically. That's number one. How do we get loneliness? Disconnection from God. Number two. Disconnection from help me. A man is lonely when he's disconnected from his help me. How? Physical distance. Sir, please, I beg you in the name of the Lord. It is better not to marry than to marry and your wife is in Australia and you are in America. He says, for this reason shall a man leave his wife or leave his father and his mother and be connected with his wife and both of them shall be one. And what God has joined together, let no career let no money put asunder. Sir, ma, you either don't get married than to be married and you are living in prison and your wife is living in Fort Worth. No, 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 no. It has to be together. Amen. Sleeping on the same bed. Praise the Lord. Don't let me get around you now. You know, let, let me just stop it there because my time is almost gone. Physical distance. And number two, how? How do we get lonely? How do we disconnection from help me? Emotional distance. Sir, ma, I beg you, if you are married, look at your wife when you wake up in the morning and say, she's beautiful. Because if you don't, somebody else will do. 
And if you are not careful, the emotions is being detached from you. And that is why there's an affair. Amen. And my wife knows how to get me now. He said, do you see anything? I said, oh, God help me. What did I see? God, what did I see? <laughs> I said, can you help me out? Do you see anything? I said, oh, yeah, your hair. He said, no, not the hair. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I beg you in the name of the Lord, you can be married for 20 years, and still there's an emotional disconnection from the wife, and that can be a cause of loneliness. Do you know many men who are having an affair? It's not because of sex. They are looking for somebody that you tell them you are doing a good job. You've tried. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, men have ego. They want to come home from work and somebody up. It doesn't matter where they work. Your beginning may be small, but your latter end shall be gloriously increased. <laughs> Hallelujah. When that man comes home, look at him and says, you are doing a good job. At least I'm married to you. Praise the Lord. So please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, so that you don't have emotional disconnection. Do you know what you have to do? Appreciate your man. Amen. Otherwise, you can be living in the same house, sleeping on the same bed, and yet you are a gunner. Emotional disconnection. And not that alone, spiritual distance. There has to be an altar in your house. Family altar. If all you know how to do is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it's a prayer. Amen. Amen. Do it together. I know you want to be on the mountains. You want to fast 40 days and 40 nights. You want to do your prayer work. But please, at least once a day, gather your children together and the wife. Man, you are the head of the home. It doesn't matter whether your wife is a prayer leader at Jesus' house. Amen. Dallas, you are still the man. You are still the one that needs help. She's the one that was brought to you. Amen. If all you know how to do is our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, say it and say, everybody, good night. Amen. Heaven will hear that. Then you pray separately. A am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be in that house. You may be earning seven-figure salary, and you are still a lonely man. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let's move on. Let's move on. Not only disconnection from help me. Help me out there. Disconnection from fellowship. It says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much as we see the day approaching. Do you want to be free from loneliness? Find somebody you can connect with at Jesus' house, Dallas. Find a friend. Turn to your neighbor say, you need a friend here. Yes. Amen. W because there are some situations where you need to talk to somebody. I, I hope you are not going back to your village. You are not going back to your tribe. You are not going back to your people to ask for advice. The people that you have left behind, the smokers and the fornicators, your fellowship is here. He said, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. Anytime there is fellowship, come. Amen. Amen. Anytime there is choir practice, come. Even though you don't sing, you just sing at the back and keep tapping your feet. Amen. Amen. And very soon you get into the mood. Amen. And very soon, God will give you the anointing. They'll be begging for you to come and sing with them. Praise the Lord. So there is need for fellowship. May God help us in Jesus. Let's, let's move on. What are the dangers of loneliness? Loneliness leads to death. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 14, it is a major precipitant of depression and alcoholism. It is the cause of range of medical problems, some which it takes decades to show up. There was another study at University of Chicago that was done on the dangers of loneliness. It says doctors provide more complete medical care for patients who are supportive families. Do you know if you go to any hospital and you are by yourself, most likely they will just leave you there until they take care of others. But if they see your wife there, they see your husband there, they see your children there, they will take care of you like that quickly. Praise the Lord. The second thing is living alone increases the risk of suicide regardless of age. I know you have your money now. If you are still a boy, not a man. Amen? Find somebody that you can share your apartment with just for fellowship. You will not die of loneliness in Jesus' name. Social interaction, lonely people do have not have a positive as those as other people. Social interaction. Loneliness raises the level of circulating stress hormones and levels of blood pressure. People have high blood pressure. Check it very well. Maybe it's because of loneliness. Loneliness individual report what? Higher levels of what? Perceived stress. Loneliness destroys the quality and efficiency of sleep. You are waking up two, three times a night. Maybe you are lonely. May God help us in Jesus' name. 
as we try to conclude, what can I do to get help from loneliness? This is where we are now. We all need help in our season of loneliness. Everybody, turn to your neighbor and say, I need help. I need help too. Adam and Eve got help to stay alive. So did Elijah and David. What help? These are the help that are sure. Number one, come out from hiding. Number two, do what? Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. You want to talk about this one by one, then quickly I will step off the stage because it's 12 or 3. I'm supposed to be out of here by 12. What do I need to do when I'm lonely? Number one, come out from hiding. God loves you. He cares for you. It's just like that prodigal son. Do you know the father has been waiting for him? Even though he has wasted his substance. God has been waiting for you for a moment like this to come back to God and say, God, I am lonely. I need your help. Take me back, and God will have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, not only must you come out from hiding, because hiding is just as if a house set on fire and you put gasoline on it. Come out from hiding, return back to God. Number three, connect with helpers of destiny. Elijah, in his season of loneliness, was sent to Hazel. He says, appoint Hazel, anoint him as the king over Syria. Jehu, anoint him as king over Israel. And Elijah is going to take over your job. Hello? Can you imagine you have been alive and God already says, this is the person taking over your job? I hope you won't kill him before he takes over. <laughs> but that is how God does his things. So that Elijah will not kill himself of loneliness. Perhaps the greatest helpers of man's destiny is who? If your wife is by your hand, just hold your hand and just squeeze it. She understands what you mean. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say, I... I. <laughs> Number four, commune with God. David's help in a moment of loneliness and depression came when he decided to commune with God. He says, God, shall I pursue? Will I overtake? Will you help me? God says, yes, I've been waiting for you to ask. Do you know, during this time, everybody forsook David. They want to stone him. And God says, pursue, overtake, and you will recover all. Amen. Sir, ma, if you can come back to God today, if you can be true to God, and say, God, I need your help. I am lonely. I'm married. I have children, but I'm still lonely. Do you know what God is going to tell you? I've been waiting to hear that from you. Because if God come and help you without you asking, he says, well, I never asked for it anyway, so how did you come? Just like Adam. It's the wife you gave me. So, but when you ask, God will help you. I say, God will help you. In the name of coming with God. The last two, or the last three. Help me here. Amen. Control your feelings. There's a difference between feelings and facts. And there's a difference between facts and truth. Amen. Feeling is not true. Is it true that people don't like me at Jesus' house? Is it true that I'm a loser? Is it true that nobody cares? It's a feeling. And feeling is not the fact. Get it out of your head. There are people who care. There are people who are praying for you. There are people that care for you. Because you are here, you are in a family. So it's a feeling. Get it out of your head quickly in Jesus' name. Amen. Number six, comfort others. There are people who are high power. Like my sister that sang on that end there. I don't know what her name is. That walking. Man, she is so high power. She... <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Connect with people like that before you know it, you'll be dancing like that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Comfort one another. The Bible is a good news. Amen. Text somebody, call somebody. Amen. Download somebody. <laughs> Amen. Tweet somebody and tell them. Just give them a word. Maybe all they are looking for is just a word of encouragement. The Bible says, comfort ye one another with this. The good news you hear. And please, I beg you, laugh more. Amen. Amen. When they said, you know, that, that laughter is one of the second most powerful emotion God has given to man, aside from love, aside from love. You cannot laugh and be stressed. You cannot laugh and be mad. You cannot laugh and the whole world is against you. They said laughter is low calorie, caffeine free. One size fits all. Amen. And it is very, very contagious. You just smile at your neighbor and see what happened to them. And let, just look at their face. See what happened. What, what did they return to you? 
they smile. So please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, laugh more. Amen. Amen. If you don't hear anything today, you want to be free from stress, you want to be free from uh, loneliness, do what? Laugh. Laugh. There was a story of a man, they told him that he's going to die. The doctors look at his case and say, you know what, you have one week to live. And this is back in Africa. And you know what this man did? He rent the three stooges, Baba Salah, and all those. <laughs> Amen. You know what, Baba? And he rented it, and every day he put it, put it on TV. He laughed and laughed and laughed. After one week, he went back to the doctor. They said the sickness is gone without, without taking one tablet. I beg you in the name of the Lord, come around to Jesus' house. Laugh. PF is always laughing. That's why I love him. Amen. But don't cross him. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And last but not the least, please come to fellowship. Because in his presence, there is pleasure forevermore. Not pressure. Pleasure forevermore. So what do I need to do now to get out of loneliness? Number one is what? Number two? Number three? Number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, and a conclusion as I step down. Exercising control of your mind is the first thing that you need to do. Amen? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen? And in verse 2, verse 2, it says, your mind, your mind, by the controlling of your mind, you give it unto the Almighty God, which is your reasonable service. Let go of the old beliefs to, and that take away energy to put your relationship with God and your help meet at the top of your priority. You can get help from loneliness. It's about how quickly you are willing to reconnect back to God and the loved ones. Before we pray this morning, there was a man at the pool of Bethsaida in John chapter 5. John 5, 5, Jesus says, you need help. You've been here for 38 years. And in verse 7, he says, I have no one. I have no man. I don't know if you can put that verse on the screen. John chapter 5, verse 7. John 5, 7. Is, can somebody find it in their Bible? John 5, 7. He says, I have no one. For 38 years, 38, this man has been lonely by the pool of Bethsaida. Jesus says, what can I do for you? And instead of him to say, I just want out, he says, I've been lonely for 30, 38 years. And you know what Jesus said? Take off your bed and go home. There may be people around you who are not willing to help you, but there is Jesus. He wants to help you this morning. He wants to assist you this morning. He wants to deliver you from loneliness this morning. Hallelujah. Can we sing that song again? My God is awesome. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken. Bow your heads in the name of Jesus. Heal me, O oh God, I'm broken. He will the awesome God we serve here is a God who can deliver you from loneliness. Just tell him, I need help, O oh God, I need help. Move this mountain in the name of Jesus. Deliver me, O oh God, deliver me. Hide me, O oh God, from this reign of loneliness. The awesome God that we serve can deliver you. Our Father and our God, we bless your majesty. Thank you for your word unto your people this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, every giant of loneliness in their life, deliver them in the name of Jesus. Heal us totally and completely. You are an awesome God. Touch us at our point of our knees. And let your name and your name only be glorified. Thank you, mighty Jesus. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed awesome. god bless you My God is awesome.